All right, so in this particular lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn how we could kind of add an item here. And after adding an item, if we click on this particular item, uh, the item should be striked out. So in order to write some code for this, let's understand the flow of actions which need to take place. So first of all, whenever I click on this particular item, we all know that we need to handle the on click on that particular item. So without thinking about anything else let's first focus on this part itself that is the click on this particular item all right so if i go back here the item over here is the to do item and we only want to consider the click on the name of the item itself that means if we click anywhere over here uh, the action of unchecking or marking the item as done should not take place therefore we'll only target this item dot name so let's add an on click to this item dot name. But right now this item dot name is not present in any kind of a separate HTML tag. So let's create a span tag for this one. So I'll create a span tag and place this item dot name inside that span tag. All right. Now, once we have this, let's now add an on click to this one. So I'll say, all right, on clicking on this span tag, I want to perform some action. So let's say we want to simply handle a handle click. So over here, I could simply say handle click and this handle click function needs to be defined somewhere here. So I'll define that function called as function handle click. And for now, let's say I would say console.log item text clicked. So this is quite simple. I could now go ahead, hit refresh on this one, add an item such as dinner. And now if I click on this one, it says item text clicked. So if we have another item here like lunch, even for that item, it's going to say item text clicked. But if we want to just strike out one single item, that means we need to uniquely access that particular item, which means that whenever we click on that item, we should also have the information about what item is now being clicked. So if I click on dinner, we should know that dinner is clicked. And if we click on lunch, that means we should know lunch is clicked. So in order to identify that, what we could do here is that whenever this handle click is kind of called, we could also pass in the item name itself to this handle click. So over here, I could say, all right, I need to pass in the item name here. So I could say item dot name. But now the problem with this is that you cannot directly call this function here because now what happens is if you add an item like lunch here, this item text click will be automatically called and therefore to this on click will pass in a callback function and will pass in the handle click as a callback so that it won't be immediately called. So now this will actually prevent that from happening. So if I say lunch, uh, as you can see, that function is now automatically not called here. And once we have passed in that item name here, what you could also do is you could simply log that thing up over here. So I could say, Okay, we have passed an item name here. I could accept that item name here inside this handle click. So let's accept that in the name parameter. And let's also print that thing up over here as name. So now what happens is if I click on this, it says item text click lunch. So let's add dinner. Let's add football. And now what happens is if I click on football, it would say item text click football dinner, so on and so forth. So that means now we are able to uniquely identify the click on these specific items. Now our next task is to go ahead and mark those items as completed. So right now, all the items which we have, the status of all those items is set to false. So therefore, if I go to form.jsx, as you can see, for every to do, the done is set to false. So when we click on this specific item, we want to set it's done to true. Now, the question is how exactly to go ahead and set the status of a single item to true out of all the items which we have. So in order to implement this logic, you need to have a good understanding of JavaScript. But don't worry, I have you covered. We are going to take an example to learn how this works from scratch. So first of all, let's emulate the items which we have up over here by creating a list. So we all know that the items which we are storing right now are in this particular format, which is name and the done status. So here I'll simply copy this and we'll create a dummy array over here in a JS file. So here I would say 
let to do's is going to be equal to a list of to do's and a list of to do's is going to contain all the objects of to do. So we will create our first object here and let's set the first object's name to let's say lunch. Let's say the status of this is false. Let's give a comma, create another object. Let's say this is dinner. And now let's say we have the third option here, which is let's say breakfast. So I would say breakfast. All right. So right now all of them are done. So let's assume that here we click on dinner. And when dinner is clicked, we want to go ahead and set the done of that to true. That means the task of having dinner is done. So let's try to implement that up over here. So after this, I would actually create a variable here. So I would say let name equals dinner because we want to mark the dinner as completed. And now let's learn how exactly to mark the dinner as completed out of all the to do's which we have. So in order to just mark this one to do as completed, first of all, we have to loop through all the to do's and find the to do whose name is equal to dinner. Therefore, I will say to do's dot map and this to do's dot map is going to give us a new list of to do's. So let's save that into a new variable called as new to do's. So I would say const to do's or let's say new to do's equals to do's dot map. And we actually want to map through every single to do. So in order to access every single to do, I would say to do and then use a callback function here. And this function is going to go ahead and find out the to do whose name is dinner. So over here, after looping through each to do, I would check for the name of the to do is equal to this name, which we have. So this kind of loops through every single to do, which we have, and every single to do can be accessed using this to do right here. So if I right now say, all right, console dot log the to do, which we have, this will simply print up the to do object, which we have. But we don't want to console log this, but instead we want to find the to do whose name is dinner. So I would say, all right, I want to get the to do dot name where the to do dot name is going to be equal to this name, which we have passed. So I would say name. So if this is found, then we want to do something. So here I would make use of the ternary operator. So I would say, all right, if this happens, then do this, then perform some action or else perform some other action here. So if we find that the to do name actually matches up with this name, which is dinner, that means we have to set the done of this thing from false to true. Now the question is how exactly would you set that? So we cannot simply go ahead and set the single property here, but instead we need to set the entire object. So in order to set the entire object, I'll first create an object here. And then I want to say that, okay, I have this done. So set the done property to you could say true here, but we don't want to set it to true. But instead, we want to set it to the opposite of what is present over here. So that means if the done was true, this should be set to false. And if the done is false, it should be set to true. That means the done should be set to opposite of whatever the done value is. So I would say the done should be negation of to do dot done. All right, so now the done property is set, but what about the name over here? So the name property for each and every one of those to do's is different. So we want to say that, all right, I want to set the done to the opposite of whatever the done value is, but I just want to copy whatever the name it already has. And therefore over here, we use the spread operator. So we say dot, dot, dot to do comma, the next property here. So what this does is that, it takes this item and it understands that, all right, this is a spread operator. That means I have to copy all the properties from this over here. So it will copy the name dinner over here. However, it will take a look at the done property and it will understand that the done property has to be updated. So it will update the done property to the opposite of whatever is present here. So the false over here will turn to true. And this should only be performed if the name actually matches up with this name, which we have provided here. So for all the rest of the items, which we have up over here, we could simply have the to do item, which is this to do. So over here, I could say, all right, for all the other items, I just want to have the to do item there. And that's it. So 
This logic might sound a little bit confusing, but if you're familiar with JavaScript, then this is a piece of cake for you. All right, so now let's print out the new to-dos and let's see the kind of data it currently has. So right now let's go back here and let's console.log the new to-dos. All right, so if I take a look at the new to-dos here, as you can see, lunch has done to false, dinner has done to true, and breakfast has done to false. And that's because we have said that we want to set the dinners done to true. If I change this thing to let's say lunch, now what happens is the done property of this thing would turn to true. Now this is the logic which we need to use whenever we click on a certain button here. So let's go back to the to-do item here and we need to implement the same logic which we have used up over here. So once we have the name, which is this name right here, we also have the to-dos over here as well which are passed as props, that means we have to loop through the to-dos and kind of map through the to-dos and use the same logic here. So let's use that up over here. So let's get rid of console log from here. And I would say, all right, let's take the to-dos, map through all the to-dos, so to-dos.map, take every single to-do which we have and check if the name of that to-do is equal equal to the name which is being passed here. So in order to make that check, I would say to do dot name is equal equal to the name which is passed. If that is true, then I need to implement this logic here, which is to create an object, copy the current to do values which we have in that object. So triple dot to do, which is the spread operator. And I just want to change the done property. So I would say set the done property of that one to the negative of whatever the done property is. So in order to access the done property, I would say to do dot done. And this is the case for when the name actually matches. And for the rest of the items, I simply want to return that particular item, which is the to do item. And that's it. So right now, this looks absolutely fine. All right, so once this thing is done, we have now mapped through all the to do's and this to do's dot map now creates the new array. So now we have to take this new array and replace the old array which we have. So the old array which we have is the to-dos. And if we want to change the to-dos, we have the set to-dos method. So we want to say something like, all right, uh, const new array is going to be this one. And then I want to set the to-dos to the new array which we have. And unless and until you do this, the logic won't work. All right, so after this, let's also log the to-do item and see the status of those items. So I would say console.log and log the to-dos. And now if I go back, let's add a couple of items, lunch, breakfast, dinner. And if I click on lunch, if I take a look at the status of this one, this is still set to false. If I click on breakfast here, as you can see the second time, the status of lunch is now set to true. And this happens because the state changes which take place here, they are not reflected in real time over here in the console. But if you want to reflect them over here on the web page, they will be reflected really well. So right now let's get rid of this console log. And now what we wish to do is, whenever the done of a certain item is set to true, we want to strike out that particular item. So in order to do this, what I could do is I could go to the to do item dot module dot CSS. So over here, let's add a CSS class called as completed. And over here, I have to simply add a CSS property of text decoration to line through, which actually strikes out a particular HTML element, which we want. All right. So once we have defined this up over here, I simply have to go ahead and now apply this to the span which we have. So we essentially want to say that, all right, whenever a particular item's done status is set to true, that means it should be striked out. So over here, in order to apply that class, we have to do a small trick. So over here, I have to say const class name. So over here, I want to check if the item status is done. So if item dot done is true, that means we need to strike out that particular item. And by striking out, we simply mean that we want to set the class name to styles.completed. And if that's not the case, then we simply want to apply an empty class to that particular span which we have. Now let's use that class name and apply that over here. 
to this span. So over here I could say the class name needs to be the class name which we have. You could also name this thing as something else because these two names are similar. So make sure that you change the name of this to something else. All right. So if I go back here, right now, let's take a look at this and see if it works. So lunch, dinner, and now if I click on lunch here, as you can see, the item is striked out. If I click on dinner, the item is striked out. If I click on lunch one more time, the item is now not striked out. If I click on dinner, the item is again not striked out over here. And henceforth, this is how we complete the mark to do as complete functionality in react. So let's try to understand the flow of what's exactly happening here. So whenever you click on a certain item, what's happening here is that we have attached an on click method to that span. So this on click is handle click. So this handle click function is executed, which takes the name of the item and passes it to this handle click function. And this handle click function kind of takes that particular name, which is nothing but the item which is currently being marked as completed. And then what we do is we take all the current items which we have, we map through each and every item and find the item which is currently clicked. So we say that, all right, loop through every single to-do item which we have, access every single to-do item, check if the name of that to-do item is equal to the name which we have passed here. And if that's the case, then we simply want to set the done of that one to the opposite value of the current value of done. And if that's not the case, then simply return a simple to do which we have. So this gives us a new array in which the value of the done of that to do is set to true. And what we do is we take that new array and we set it using the set to do's method which we have. Now one more thing which we could do here is that we could entirely remove this new array name here. So you could get rid of this and you could directly instead take whatever code which you have here and paste it inside set to do and remove the semicolon here and this works exactly in the same fashion. So if I go ahead, type in dinner, lunch. Now this still works in the exact same manner as before. So this is how you could go ahead and mark the to do items as completed. So in the next lecture, Let's go ahead and let's write a logic to calculate the total number of completed and incompleted items in our to-do list. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.